Hello everyone, my name is Chris, here is everything you need to know to become an extraordinary heavy player. It's important to note that patch 2.1.0 brought us some insane changes to the meta and way that people play this game. Before, heavy class would feel like an absolute main character role. You are playing shotgun, you have the ability to 1v3 opponents, you are expected to have the highest damage per second in your team, and you have to be the person that has the most impact on the way that game progresses, meaning that you are in charge of winning or losing most of the time. If you don't have enough space, if you have bad cash defense, Chances that your heavy player is just underplaying. As of right now, in the patch 2.1.0, heavy slowly turning into a support class. And I'm not sure if I like it or not. This is certainly something different from what we've had before. We just have to see how it will turn out to be. As of right now, with the shotgun nerf, with the ability of light players to glitch you on shield and bubble impact, as well as the infinite teleport range. All of these changes are making heavy weaker class. Almost feels like a lot weaker than it should be, but still, I would try to make this guide and structure it so it's going to be useful and valuable no matter the changes in the meta. Let's get started. Before we go in details on weapons, gadgets, abilities, as well as advanced tips and tricks, different roles in different meta compositions, as well as some macro moments, it's important to fundamentally understand your role as a heavy player in a game. You are there to protect, you are there to provide, you are there to deny and take space from your opponents, and you are there to carry the game still. I understand that even with nerfs, uh, or with nerfs, heavy class became weaker than it should be, but you are still expected to be the one that four taps, mediums, going in, bubbles, denies cash out. It is still your job, no matter whether there is crisis or something else happening in the world, it is your responsibility to bring money to the table. So how do i see a heavy class if i were to give it a definition right so you have to be a person that keeps your mediums and lights safe as well as you are the person that is responsible for taking and stealing the cash out directly or indirectly if you are not doing your job in that regard if your medium and light players are constantly dying if you cannot help yourself when opponents are stealing the cash out or you cannot steal the cash out yourself it is a sign that your heavy play style lacks some knowledge and information and it's very important to fix those mistakes here is what we're gonna do in this guide so when you fundamentally understand your role as a heavy player, it's not going to be pretty difficult to choose your abilities, weapons or gadgets because all of them are going to be aimed at protecting, helping your team steal or defend the cash out, as well as denying positions of power and applying pressure to enemies. So let's take a look at the best ability for heavy as of right now in a patch 2.1.0. If you look at the nature of the game, you quickly realize that this is not Call of Duty. This is not Deathmatch free for all. This is not who's gonna get more kills, who's gonna get more uh, damage. It's all about buying time. It's all about getting the initiative when you are stealing the cash out or depositing it in and waiting for people to approach and then playing around that. You want to be a person that wastes so much time that enemies don't have the chance to steal the cash out. And even if they try so, you will always be there to protect your teammates because it is your direct responsibility to deny players from stealing cash so when you look at abilities both charge and slam and gugan directly and indirectly help you 
with defending cash out. For example, if you'll be able to use a goo gun on a person that's stealing, um, his steal animation is gonna get cancelled. If you would charge and slam onto enemies that are stealing, you will be able to boot them off um, the point and it's also gonna be very effective. But when you fundamentally look at the nature of the game, you want to stay alive for as long as possible and the mesh shield is obviously going to be your best choice. Again, you can play whatever you want, we are talking about min maxing, we are talking about getting the best performance, maximizing your win rate, maximizing your uh, dual potential, maximizing your steal and defend percentage, right? Success percentage. So if you look at the mesh shield, you will realize that you will be able to stall the cash out for longer. Let's pretend that the cash out is this red barrel. You will be able to kite with your mesh shield. You will be able to um, pretty much not allow your enemies to shoot you or your teammates, dance around the cash out, buy as much time as possible, then turning back, boom, and... The opponents are gonna be very very mad about you. I understand that glitches are blowing up on impact but it's interesting how I rarely see players play light now. Partly because it's pretty difficult, partly because everyone's enjoying their medium gameplay. So when we look at specialization, mesh shield is going to be an absolute S tier. Charge and Slam is going to be A tier and Gugan will be B tier. At the end of this video, I'm going to give advanced tips and tricks for Mesh Shield, Charge and Slam and Gugan. So if you want to look at that, timestamps are going to be in the description. When we take a look at the best weapon for the heavy, <laughs> nothing has changed since the open beta. No matter how much they try to nerf the shotgun, it still remains the best weapon on the market. Partly because of mm, maps where 90% of your cash outs are in closed environments where you have to eventually get closer and closer to the heavy shotgun. That's going to like annihilate you um, up close, right? So, or partly because other weapons really cannot mm, compete with the heavy shotgun because of, again, the nature of cash outs and the nature of the weapon. Heavy shotgun is extremely versatile. You will be able to use it to poke enemies from that distance. And when you use your movements abilities, mm, or excuse me, medium movement abilities to close up the distance, it becomes a deadly weapon to the point where you can um, four tap mediums, five tap heavies and two tap lights if you are hitting your shots and being accurate enough. This weapon is going to be amazing when you are trying to cancel the steal on your cash out. This weapon is going to be amazing when someone is approaching while your teammate is stealing and you have the bubble. So you will be able to like three tap with a little help of your third teammate. SA-1216 is an absolute best weapon. Even though it got nerfed, it received like a 20% overall nerf and the weapon became a lot weaker than it was before but still it's not below the point where you should play Lewis gun or M60 instead. If you look at other weapons, they have one problem in common, range. Whether it's gonna be low range or uh, high range, meaning that you want to keep your distance if you are playing Lewis gun, if you are playing M60, and if you would always try to keep your distance, you will never be able to steal cash out. If you are not committing, you will lose. You have to be a person that needs to dominate other heavy player. And when you are um, competing in such environment, you will always lose your fights because enemy heavy player will always have the chance to close up the distance with you with zipline, with a jump pad, Zipline? Nope, not working. So it's gonna close up the distance with the zipline, with the jump pad, and it's not a problem in the current state of the game to really jump on your head and like four tap you. All you can do in a Lewis gun versus the shotgun battle is to walk backwards, maybe jump, slide jump, try to dodge, but it's not going to help your team because 
Again, I remind you that you are the person that is expected to carry games for your teammates. Not only that, but shotgun is 10 times easier to use. It's not FPS bound, it's not aim bound, and if you have a pretty mediocre aim, you will struggle a lot on Lewis gun, especially considering the fact that they nerfed it quite significantly and there is a weapon sway the longer you hold your left mouse button. So this weapon is going to be pretty pretty bad if you have like 140 FPS and other factors maybe your mouse pad is not washed maybe you are washed as a player and really don't know how to aim so shotgun again is going to be your choice again i'm going to give advanced tips for the shotgun later on timestamps are in the description if we would take a close look at the heavy gadgets we'll quickly realize that nothing has changed but there is a small catch instead of c4 right now you can play a lot of things and we will speak about it later let's talk about rpg for now this weapon serves multi-purpose purpose is that how you call it right you will be able to effectively poke enemies you will be able to deny uh, the cash out steals you will be able to drop cash outs drop players with it break walls and overall rpg is an absolute s tier thing that you can go for how many times have you blown up the poor light player that was not looking at you how many times you were taking a jump pad and rpging two players saying huge rpg throwing a bubble and destroying devouring enemies alive how many times have you been able to stop the cash out steal with an rpg shot while they are stealing above you are playing one below and you are just doing this and opponents are dying from cringe because they have no more time and you are there to confront them so rpg is an amazing option for you definitely advise you to play it again we'll go for advanced tips at the end of the video i'm just going for gadgets in general another great gadget that i feel like is an absolute must is going to be a dome shield even though when it was winter they nerfed the dome shield health from 350 to 300 this is still one of the best abilities in the game that allows you to deny bullets deny heals because enemies that are running heal beam will not be able to use it if opponent or their teammate is standing in the bubble this thing allows you to steal cash outs defend cash outs and even grieve other players when you have massive cash advantage you will be able to throw a bubble onto the cash out and the team that you want to help is going to have additional cover from other teams. But this <laughs> gadget has a multi-purpose uh, use and it's going to be amazing. Again, we'll go for in-depth explanation at the end. Last but not least is going to be a C4. There are a lot more options and we'll speak about them. But if you are a newer player and you want to become really, really efficient when you are defending and stealing cash outs, C4 is going to be your best friend. A lot of players don't know that you can have two C4 still. You just need to wait for the cooldown timer. So you'll be able to throw one, wait for like 30 seconds, it feels like, and then throw another one. You cannot throw more than two. So in mind that right um c4 is going to be amazing when you are defending and stealing cash out c4 is going to be amazing if you are looking at enemy players that are chasing you for example you are running away you place a c4 you turn around you place an rpg and this is going to be a big bada boom that will instantly kill mediums and light and heavily hurt heavies so c4 is great but there are other choices on the market for example, an anti-gravity cube that will allow you to stall cash outs and deny areas where opponents can come from, which was very, very interesting. I never thought this gadget is going to be really good, but it's absolutely incredible because if you would look at how terrible it is to enter a room like this where you cannot control anything, uh, you will quickly realize that this is an absolutely great gadget for you and your team. You will be able to use it at the cash out and notice the length of it 
I threw it like 15 seconds ago and it's still running. So if you are struggling against the last second steals, throwing the cube at the cash out will drastically decrease the chance of enemies of stealing it. You will be able to stall cash outs, you will be able to win a lot more games using this gadget. Don't forget that if you are being chased or if you look at enemies and see that they've grouped up, you can just throw a cube and they will float like boxes. Another interesting item on the list is going to be a barricade. I would suggest you to play it with like an M60 because you will be able to effectively get glitch behind it. You have to understand that barricade is amazing for you and even though you can cook up some of the things in it, right? Cook up some of the things in it, like it is incredibly difficult to destroy it. I just hit 70 bullets in one section and nothing has changed. We will hit more. Surely, surely it's gonna break. Yep. And after after 130 bullets, one thing broke and you can pick it up and place it again. And this is gonna be brand new. Even if you destroy like two of them, you can pick it up and place it back. And you just head glitch. This is gonna be amazing if you are trying to play in a ranged mm, composition. For example, you're playing double medium and your teammates are standing on a position of power on ultimate height and just beaming everyone that's getting in a range. Barricades are gonna be amazing for that as well. Again, advanced tips at the end of this video. And the last gadget we can speak about that is very viable as the best loadout for heavy is going to be an explosive mine. You will be able to surprise your enemies with double explosive mines on the door. You will be able to surprise your enemies with explosive mines on the cash out. You will be able to surprise your enemies with explosive mines in random areas of uh, the map where especially if it's like double stacked, crowded and people are very clueless towards where they are going. They just want to stay alive. For example, he's being chased and he's like, oh God, there is a mine. Oh God, there is another so many kills I've gotten with this and it's truly a truly uh, butt hurting experience when you're playing explosive mine. So this is pretty much the best build that you can possibly go for if you are playing heavy. Now let's talk about the roles of heavy in different compositions. This is going to be a very interesting topic that no one on YouTube has spoken about, especially as in depth as I'm about to go in. Because if you think that a heavy class is the same when you are playing double heavy medium, it is the same if you are playing heavy medium light, it's the same if you are playing heavy medium medium, or it's the same if you are playing triple heavy, you are completely wrong. Let's actually speak about it. By far the strongest composition in the current state of the game is going to be heavy medium light and if you would look at the nature of this composition you understand that this looks like a dive composition from overwatch you are setting up you are playing two plus one meaning that your medium is always behind you right and the light is flanking somewhere maybe he is using a teleporter to tp both of you in maybe he is just flanking on food but you need to understand that your composition requires you to look at windows of opportunity where you can reliably cook enemies. Meaning that if you would have an enemy isolated in a position, in not in a position of power, maybe clueless, maybe out of position, what you need to do in a heavy medium light composition is you want to pre-place any sort of movement like this or like this onto an enemy so your heavy shotgun can be useful right and then your light needs to go in and engage whether with glitches if he doesn't feel comfortable or with a stun gun and after that your heavy player jumps first throws an rpg throws a bubble and cooks up a target and then you snowball like this this is gonna be pretty much what you have to do in a heavy medium light composition because if you don't have double movement your heavy is gonna feel very slow your light is gonna be the first one to take damage and it's just gonna become very ugly outside of perfect scenarios that i have spoken about where you are padding onto the same target with a stun gun and quickly evaporating him alive your role as a heavy in a heavy medium light is to survive and pray to God that your shield does not get absolutely destroyed before you get behind natural cover. Because 
again, I remind you that light class is the main character class right now. And as a heavy, you are just a support. You are just a person that draws attention and tries to stay alive while light and medium are beaming from far. Simply because you cannot pad onto a person and reliably cook him in a millisecond. So you would need to um, rely on your medium healing you a lot more. You would need to rely on your light to hit all the shots, hit all his utility. And overall, it's just going to become very, very ugly the more you will play this game. Because opponents are going to get better. They will quickly understand that your shotgun is not as scary as it was before. They would take more aggressive duels. And overall, it's just going to become insanely difficult for you to finish off your targets. You will have less amount of ammo to work with because you need more to kill opponents. And your clutch potential will be drastically reduced. Heavy medium light is the best team composition, but it is very high skill floor skill ceiling, meaning that your Teammates have to be extraordinary from the start to have mediocre results and you need to play together a lot more. You need to fundamentally understand possibilities and limitations of a composition to have success, right? Uh, this, is, this is very, very complicated. And if you were ending up against good Diamond 1 players, um, <laughs> playing heavy medium light without any experience is going to be a pain, misery suffering and despair so as a heavy player again your role is to just hold the shield for your medium and light wait for light to wait for your medium to place movement maybe engage first um, throw a bubble maybe like shoot a few throw an rpg cook a target and then wait for your light to do all the dirty work while you are enduring and embracing uh, the terrible terrible things that has happening to you Heavy double medium composition is also pretty interesting. It is almost the same as heavy medium light in the sense that you still want a jump pad and you still want to cook up enemies with it using your bubble and RPG. But you want to use your mesh shield a lot more. You are there to protect your teammates. You want double scar medium with double heal beam that are just gonna... Uh, help each other out with any poke damage that lands, lands on you or and them or at them and then you just cook up with your shield if you don't have a shield you maybe ask for movement and then you pad into a person you bubble you rpg and then you try to do something but again as a as a nerfed heavy you don't really feel that uh, clutchy clutch and your light needs to shoot a lot more hit a lot more bullets your medium needs to hit a lot more and it feels like with this nerve game became a lot higher skill ceiling and skill floor meaning that again you want to be extraordinary just to have mediocre results and then if you want to have extraordinary results you need to be really 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 good double heavy medium is a very interesting composition that got nerfed with a shotgun nerf and with glitch buff but it's still incredibly difficult to play against because of how much utility you have you have a thousand hp shield you multiply that by two you have a 300 bubble and then you have effective hp with your medium healing you you have the ability to pad on people double rpg double bubble and create some uh terrible terrible things to your do some terrible things to your opponents right so in a double heavy medium composition your role is gonna be interesting and quite different depending on your play style and what role is already taken so there is a carry role in a heavy in a double heavy medium composition where you are the first one to engage you are the first one to die you are gonna be the person that's gonna eat a lot of rpgs eat all the shots before enemies have the chance to reload you will be the first person to endure but you will be the first person to kill so if that role is for you you take it and you ask your second friend that's playing heavy to play a support heavy support heavy is a role that's very very interesting and in my team i was playing that the most i was the support heavy and my job was to follow the first heavy because in double heavy medium composition you have to understand that the more you spread your um, attack less effective it is going to be so let's pretend that one of your heavy is jumping this person and then you for some reason are 
thinking that you will be able to 1v1 this guy on the roof and you're going for the guy on the roof instead of following your second first heavy. What's gonna happen eventually is that it will take for them so much time to cook up one player because your RPG went here, your bubble went here, your medium is not gonna feel as safe as he would with double bubble, double RPG, double mesh and overall it's just gonna be incredibly ugly. Instead, if you don't see the back of your first heavy, you're out of position, you want to, you want him to go first you want him to use his utility first, you want him to choose the target because what's gonna happen eventually is that sometimes you will pad on the target and one guy is gonna pad on this guy, one guy is gonna pad on this guy and medium is gonna go right there and <laughs> again your attack is gonna turn from a laser into a light bulb and you'll have to understand that if you want to cut metal, light bulb will never do the job. So these are your roles as a heavy in double heavy medium composition. Now let's talk about ways to effectively defend the cash out. One of the best strategies that top tier players are using is very very simple. If you are playing multiple story building, one of the best things you can do is to always drop one floor below, especially if opponents are double stacking or if the lobby is staggered and everyone is gonna be at your cash out because the vault is not cashed in in the next cash out right so what are you gonna do let's pretend that your cash out is right here right this is your cash out you want to place a c4 close to it and then you want to drop down and play one below if you have a multiple story building you can rinse and repeat that step as many times as you want because what's gonna happen if they will try to steal you wait three seconds to waste their time one two three drop you drop the cash out sometimes they will be able to steal after that because for some reason cash out is not gonna drop effectively so wait two seconds one two and then boom you drop it um 90% of the time there is going to be a person that will drop with the cash out so you can uh, you can like see for it right and then you can place a dome and try to cook him go back a little bit place another c4 and go one floor below you can have multiple story buildings and you can buy as much time as possible a lot of players are making one drastic mistake that does not help them defend the cash out and they are trying to fight early, they are trying to brawl opponents, they think that if you have the cash out, you need to fight for it. No, you need to buy as much time as possible and deny the stealer from trying to steal it. Whether you're gonna do it with gas barrels, whether you're gonna do it with mines, whether you're gonna do it with C4s or a gravity cube, it does not matter. The end goal is gonna be the same. You want stealers to not touch the cash out until it's 5 seconds left because it takes 6 seconds for a person to steal the cash out. If you are not familiar and don't feel the 6 seconds, you can count in your heads like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and at 6 they're gonna steal it. So you will be able to always be in time to protect it. Another mistake that people are making when defending the cash out is that they are very far they are very very far like for example the cash out is right there in a the hole and they are hiding right here and they're like hmm i will be able to i will be able to stop the stealer and then they start stealing he's like running 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 it's like three four five and then he rpgs he misses an rpg and it's just jover it is absolutely jover so as a rule of the thumb you want to take a position on the map where you will understand that you will either not be met with other players you will not be confronted by other teams so you want to let other teams fight against each other right or you want to find a spot that will allow you to hold your ground whether it's going to be above sometimes right whether it's going to be above maybe you will be able to cook from here right with a, with a red barrel or maybe with an rpg or with a c4 Maybe you want to play here and you don't want to fight. You want to apply a little bit pressure. Maybe burst the bubble right here, right? But you don't jump too early. Please do not do that. Like 
oh they stole for one second they faked i'm gonna go in in seven people and fight them just to just to get blown up by a random c4 and get rpgs and just die from cringe right so you want to wait for the last second you wait 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 one two and then you commit he you are the first person to commit because your medium player needs to stay alive so you can have more money at the end of the game your medium player needs to stay alive because when enemies are gonna leave you will be able to uh your medium would be able to pick up the trophies res and you will be able to go your medium needs to stay alive because he's the worst player to defend the cash out still right and light or double heavy if you're playing hml or hhm are gonna be the second best option so you have to be somewhere close like for example you are playing one below right let's pretend that the cash out is right here you have a c4 ready so where is going to be a great position for you to play for example right here right you will always be able to kite outside and you will always be able to like if if opponents are fighting here you just kite outside you wait for them because when you are applying pressure right here your opponents are not receiving any pressure and they can steal for free but when you are avoiding a team right here your opponents would have to fight these opponents this is very important to understand and a lot of players don't think about it because if you kill this team you are just helping the enemies to steal the cash out but if you make them fight against each other they will have hard time stealing and again you just need to buy more time man you don't need to fight please this game is not call of duty this is not like this that right uh one of the things that you need to understand about c4s is that they can get glitched meaning that you won't be able to use them there is a blue indicator on your right that tells you that your c4 is ready if you blow it up it's gonna become red and sometimes when the c4 is glitched it's also gonna become red so you need to keep an eye for that because sometimes it's gonna be a funny moment when you're like oh i'm in a perfect position to stop the cash out from stealing just to realize that your c4 is not ready they glitched it they glitched it and they are stealing for free you're like oh the game is bad the game is trash this is bugged this is bugged <laughs> yeah so when that happens you can you can actually replace the second c4 below and no matter what they do whether it's going to be an aps whether it's going to be a glitch whether they break it you will always be able to reliably drop the cash out and it's going to be really really easy for you to cook it up like this what else can i tell you when it comes to stealing the cash out mm -hmm. when okay defending the cash out is pretty simple stealing the cash out is gonna be a lot more difficult and it will require your team a lot more coordination and a lot more patience and practice let's actually speak about it so when you are stealing the cash out there are two main things you need to think about you need to think about uh how safe it is going to steal right so it's going to be incredibly unsafe to steal the more lines of sight you have so for example let's pretend that the cash out is right here how likely you will be able to steal this cash out against a heavy medium light team that's alive and standing right here on the on the roof zero percent chance if you are same skill level or they are better you will lose 10 cash outs out of 10 even if you steal it at the cost of your life and your teammates life you will fail miserably so how do you actually go and steal cash outs pretty simple pretty simple let's pretend that the cash out is right here in in in, in the safest island out there you are approaching below you know that enemies are standing above you're approaching below you want to drop the cash out down you want to blow it down right because your c4 works everywhere you blow it down you wait for a few seconds and then you pad onto your enemies you go for an rpg you bubble yourself and then you fight like a demon this way you will be able to force your opponents to drop from their position of power and even though you don't have the initiative yet you will be able to see everyone and you will be able to make a decision whether you want to go in on the same team on a certain team or whether you want them to fight each other or you just don't want to fight you just don't want to engage because there is no time because the worst thing that you can do is you can make a bad move just like Gary Kasparov one of the best chess players said like he said 
Who told you that if you don't have a good move on a chessboard, you need to have a bad move? You can just leave. If you have cash on you, and if it's not gonna cost you game, if it's not the last second cash out, you just leave for the next cash out. You use your movement, you tap the next vault, and you are Gucci. Nothing else to worry about. But so many teams are dying for absolutely nothing. Going in, they're like, no, we need to steal it. We need to steal it YOLO. We need to try this, try that. Okay, so... First thing, you drop the cash out, you pad above, and then you play above, you fight the team that's defending the cash out. Worst thing you can do is when there are three players alive and they are just sitting on your ass stealing the cash out. Another thing you have to understand is that it's not your job to steal the cash out as a heavy player. Maybe in a double heavy composition, you have the privilege to do so. But when you are a heavy medium light composition and you are throwing bubble, thinking that you will be able to steal the cash out against three players, you are playing like an idiot. And this needs to be fixed, right? So how do you steal the cash out properly? Let's pretend that the cash out is right here and you cooked everyone below. You are dropping down for it. So let's drop down. You drop it down for it. And then you shield your guy. Let's pretend that this bubble thing is a guy. That's stealing the cash out, right? Your, your teammate. You want to mesh... You want a bubble and you want a body block because players are going to get closer because players are going to stun gun. Players are going to shoot all the bullets in the head. So you body block him like this and maybe you will have the chance to lucky steal your cash out. And after you've stolen, you want to get back instantly. Maybe you want to use a window climb, but there is no window. Surprise, surprise. Maybe you want to use a window climb. There is no window. Can Jesus Christ help me? Um, so you want a window climb and like mesh from here and you have the initiative, you have the option to go in again, bubble and then shoot the player that's stealing the cash out because now instead of stealing the cash out, you are defending it. Maybe you want to immediately pad above with your medium like boom, you pad above and now you are out of danger because trust me, the second you're going to steal the cash out that every team wants is the second you will become the first team that's going to like be the most wanted one, right? Another thing you can do is that you understand that you don't have enough ammo, like for example, one, two, three, four, you can just RPG yourself and it's gonna deal insane amounts of damage to enemies. So you one, two, three, four. If you have to stop the cash out still last second, you do that, right? You can always you can always throw a C4, and if you throw a C4 and an RPG, it's gonna drastically increase the amount of damage you deal. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty much everything you need to know about stealing and defending also a quick tip you can ask your teammate to fake steal it this is gonna be insanely powerful let's pretend that the cash out is right here you say we fake steal for two seconds and then we fight so you you bubble him you mash you fake steal one two he lets go people are committing because they think that you are stealing for free right People are committing and then you are there with a shotgun to boom, 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 destroy them and your medium can fight and your light can fight or it's a second medium and it just becomes really, really nice. Another advice that I can give you with cash out is like, let's pretend that this is the cash you are stealing. You can crouch spam. Sit, stand, sit, stand, sit, stand, because it's incredibly easy to kill a person that's just standing still, right? It's so easy to land a headshot on this guy. It's so easy to land a headshot on this guy. It's like... Boom, 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 and he is dead in comparison with the guy that's crouch spamming. Crouch, spam, crouch, spam. If you do it faster, it's not going to be as valuable, right? Because your head is going to stay on the same level. So you crouch, spam, crouch, spam, crouch, spam, something like this. And it's going to drastically help. So now, after we have spoken about pretty much everything important, one thing I wanted to speak about is how do I actually rotate around the map? As a heavy shotgun, your shotgun works 3-5 meters on enemies and one of the worst things you can do is that you have enemies, like let's pretend that let's pretend that this is a bridge, there is a bridge and you have enemies right here. One of the worst things you can do is like pull up your shield and walk. This is so stupid, they're gonna completely beam your shield and your mediums are gonna be in danger. Instead, what you can do is you go below unnoticed stealth mode. You go below, you pad above, you RPG, you bubble, boom, you drop them, and then you fight right here. Boom, 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 boom. You fight right here. Boom, boom, boom. Shield. Like you dodge. And then you, again, like cooking them up like this. So if you have the chance to rotate from below, you do it. All right. Now let's go for my favorite part of the guide. Old, advanced tips and tricks. 
and we will start off with the mesh shield and mesh shield is incredibly more versatile than you think it is and there are multiple levels to a mesh shield heavy user but level one you are fighting without mesh shield you are playing like you are immortal and you think that you don't you, you don't need mesh shield in fight because everyone is dying from cringe from your overpowered shotgun well People are gonna beam you with scars, people are gonna destroy you with Lewis guns, people are gonna kill you with MP5s, and at level 1 you quickly realize that you are dying way too much. Level 2 of Mesh Shield. You are coming close to an enemy, and like, you absorb some damage with your shield, but then again, you are fighting without the shield, you are like, I don't need it bro, I came close, this is my, this is my distance, this is my time, and you are fighting them, you're like, I'm gonna cook everyone, this is gonna be level 2, and you are still gonna die, you're gonna die a little less, but you're still gonna die, level 3 of mesh shield, you are coming close to an enemy, and then you cook, and then you shield after 4 shots, aha, so it will cancel an animation of a small reload on the shotgun, and after you pulled it up, you will be able to cook again. Aha, it cancelled again. This is level 3. I've learned, man. Hmm, maybe there are, there are another levels. Maybe there is another depth to the mesh shield that I can actually go for. Okay, level 4. You actually have the chance to immediately shoot after you mesh. Boom. Oh, and then boom. Wow, that's crazy, right? Level 4. It's like boom, mesh. Boom, mesh. Boom, mesh. Oh my god, I can do that. And you can do that with pretty much every single um, number of shots that you can go for. For example, you are closing the distance, you're like boom, 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 boom. Oh my god, I can use my mesh shield like this and I am al almost immortal because all the damage that opponents are dealing to me are in my effective shield. Boom, boom. And then you are like, op, op. <laughs> nice. And then level 5 is when you are um, finding it with movement with mesh. One of the best things you can do with mesh, right? So you can, first of all, you can just walk like this, right? Walk backwards, walk in front. This is this is pretty, pretty boring and people will just walk on you and destroy you like this, right? So how do you actually use movement as a mesh shield player, right? So you can slide and jump. You can slide and jump to the side. You can slide and jump backwards, but be careful. When you are sliding and jumping backwards, you are exposing yourself way too much. So jump and slide on the side, please. You always wanna, you always wanna make sure that you are holding the shield in front of you, not like this, right? So let's 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 imagine the situation where I am sliding backwards. I'm exposing myself. If I'm low HP, opponent can cook me, right? Better way to do it is when opponent is coming to you. For example, let's take this bot. Right? He's coming to me. What am I supposed to do? I'm jumping in front of him. I'm sliding and jumping. Jumping in front, slide, jump. This is gonna be the best way to stall and buy as much time as possible. You jump, slide, jump. Jump, slide, jump. Maybe jump is not necessary and you just slide, jump. Right? Like this. But this feels more natural. So, this is pretty much everything you need to know about proper mesh shield usage. Like, boom. <laughs> boom boom and then you just jumped into him and destroyed them completely and then you shield again and you are ready to fight boom right you will be able like oh you can also melee while using the shield it will allow you to cook up one hp targets it will allow you to uh, cook up windows for example your window climbing right here and like you can melee right so this is also gonna be pretty pretty nice but this is pretty much everything you need to know about mesh shield when you look at the shotgun, always very important to look at the amount of ammunition you have left. If it's not 16, 12, 8 or 4, you need to perform a small reload. So for example, you cooked up a person with 13 bullets, right? You can perform a big reload by pressing R or you can shoot one bullet somewhere. And then you already have four more bullets to fight another person. So for example, you cooked him, right? You cooked him and you have three more bullets. You can shoot them, boom, boom, boom. And you will be able to quickly cook up a person, reload, and then continue your domination like this. So, for example, it took you, boom. You shoot it at the wall. And then when you are approaching this guy, you will always have enough bullets to kill him, right? In comparison with you wasting them because you have such a big magazine, uh, it's not going to be a problem for you to cook it up like that.
RPG, RPG Advanced Tips and Tricks. Your RPG works so much better if you are using a mega pad or a jump pad, right? So it's going to be a lot easier for you to aim. It's going to be a lot easier for you to apply pressure. It's going to be a lot easier for you to target opponents because all you're going to see is a mesh shield heavy when you are approaching your enemies. So by jumping, you are saving yourself some time and damage possibly, right? So RPG works best in air. Always ask your medium for pad. You can say pad me here. You come closer. Can you can we pad here? And then you slide into a pad and then you use an RPG to cook up your enemies. When it comes to your bubble, aka dome shield, it also works best when you are in the air. You right click it, it always lands in the spot you right clicked it, right? So again, ask your medium for movement and do it you can do some advanced tactic which is trophy blocking right so you can place a dome shield let's pretend that this is a trophy of a person you killed you can place a dome shield so the edge of a dome shield covers the trophy and clueless medium players are gonna try to defibrillate through the dome and uh, it will actually cook them up like this Boom. so it covers the almost covers the like edge of it right you can try to do that. One thing that you need to be careful of is that thing takes like three bullets to destroy. And if they destroy it, your dome shield is going to be cooked. This is why sometimes when you are throwing your dome shield and you get hit with an RPG, you don't have any dome shield left. So be careful about that. Advanced C4 tricks. I've already spoken about placing it below and playing one below. I've already spoken about two C4s at the same time. And you can always pick up C4s and replace them if you want to, if you didn't know. I've spoken about the light that shows you the st status of your C4. And overall, there is not much to say. I've already spoken about even this tactic where you are being chased, you place the C4, and then you just RPG the hell out of players that are trying to do so. Looking at the other gadgets, I don't feel like there are any useful advanced tips that I can give you. You just place them and then you kind of go um, along with it. So hopefully this video was useful. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about it. Do you have any other suggestions? Let me know how do you feel about Heavy Class in Season 2. Because I feel like it is pretty bad, apparently. See you next time. Bye bye.